guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video, guys, we'll be working here on a Mazda 2.3 turbo engine, guys. And if you have a Mazda CX-7 or Mazda Speed 3, guys, this one will be a very helpful video to you, guys. We'll show you how to remove and replace the crank, crankcase breather, guys. This is part of the PCB system. Crankcase breather. Stay with us, guys. That's what we'll be doing. In the meantime, we'll have more than 200 videos on this car, this engine, and any car we get at the shop because our mission, guys, is to save you as much money as we can. All we need guys in return, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and drop a comment below guys so we know if the video was helpful or if you have any recommendations. Now, this is the 2.3 engine guys, we started taking it apart, stay with us, we will start from the very beginning and we will show you what needs to be done. We will need to go ahead and remove the intake manifold first, all that needs to come out of the way and once we remove guys the intake manifold, we will be able to get to the uh, crankcase breather and we will show you why. So all the tools and parts that we use guys are listed in the description of the video below for your convenience. We have the car on jack stands okay and uh, tire chocks on the back so it doesn't roll on us on the left and the right side. That way we can access underneath and uh, we'll have more room to work with. Once you jack it up all you have to do go under the vehicle now uh, you need a 12 millimeter, okay 12 millimeter socket and right there in the middle there is one bolt on the radiator get gloves, high protection, uh, make sure the car is cold because if it's cold that coolant can severely burn you okay start removing the bolt and once you remove it uh, coolant will start coming out Okay, check it out now. Okay, perfect. We'll just let it drain now. Next you want to go ahead and open the radiator and more will start coming out. Check it out. Pretty fast, right? Okay. So this is the coolant drain plug, okay. It's plastic, so you have to be careful how you get that thing tight. There is a rubber seal here that you need to inspect before you put it together. Always check that because otherwise uh, you can develop a coolant leak and that could eventually overheat your car. So the coolant's still draining. We're getting probably about uh, six and a half to seven liters out of it so far. You can see it's greenish in color. Uh, it's pretty much stopped now. Just a few drops here and there. We're going to put the plug. Pull, pull the bucket out and see see what it looks like but uh, pretty much guys uh, that's how you drain that coolant you have to be very careful how you get that uh, screw tight because this is plastic screw do not over tighten it okay so here you're supposed to have two clips ours are missing you just remove the clips and pull that cover out okay the whole thing just comes out that's where your intercooler is Whoever worked on that thing in the past, you can see they lost the bolt, so they installed new bolts. They're missing one nut right here on the intercooler as well, so people are not very, very careful when they work on things. So, 12 millimeter, a uh, 14 millimeter, excuse me, a uh, 12, 12. A nut here, one on the back side, okay, right there. And this one, we have to do it with a wrench because we will not be able to. One is missing here, after that we need to disconnect this hose on this side and the hose on the other side as well. Again guys, all the tools and parts that we use will be listed in the description of the video below for your convenience. So, this nut is coming out now. We need to uh, di uh, remove that hose. Okay, right here now. So this is with a 10 millimeter socket now or a wrench. Okay, perfect. This one got loose. One on the back side.
Ok, we got that post flight blues. One more on top here. Ok, pull that pause out. Now the bottom one as well. Could be a little bit stuck. Ok, we'll just slide these holes out. Ok, like that. Now, let's see if something else is holding. We'll try to pull the uh, intercooler up. Ok, it's just stuck in the hoses. Need to get the bushings out. Ok, this hole still keep holding a little bit here. So, which means that that uh, thing we need, will need to come loose a little bit more. So, we'll get uh, both of them loose a little, just a little bit more. So, we can make sure that so we don't damage anything. Perfect. Ok, let's see this one. Ok, great. Now you can see how easy it slid out. We have the one on the back side now. Holding just a little bit. Ok, and the intercooler is about to come out. Ok, next uh, we'll just remove the wiring harness for the ignition coils one by one. So, you can see four ignition coils, four wires. If one of them is stuck, push it in, then push down and pull it out. Ok, more wires there. This one is not out all the way. Just, ok, it's stuck. There, there is a one little bitty tube that we need to press in with a small screwdriver. I'll pry the piece up a little bit. Ok, perfect. We got stuck there. Ok, this wiring harness right here, that's a one big clip. It's not gonna work like that, we have to do it by hand. Ok, push down again, push in and then disconnect it, ok, like that. Now we have a few holders, let me get the clip removal too so we can pry those open. Ok, perfect. Now, even if we want to, we can uh, disconnect all the wiring harness. Ok, you can see from right here. Now you can disconnect those hoses from the intake or we are going to disconnect them from right here. Ok, from what I can see this thing will be stuck really really big time because you can see how the hoses deform. So we will actually put the clamp on, it will be easier. If I go ahead and remove it from right here, you can see that red thing. Ok, you need to press the red ring down. Ok, with your fingers. And one person pull it up. Ok, just like that. Now we have one more on the bottom here that we need to disconnect the same way. Or this one, we can disconnect it from here, it's up to us. This one will be easier to disconnect from here. Ok, perfect. You can see just like that. Those hoses are disconnected. So we have 7 8 wrench now we need to disconnect. I believe this is the EGR tube there. So eventually we'll come, come loose, that thing is pretty tight, believe me.
Okay, you can see towards the end it starts going way easier than before. When you put that thing together you always have to make sure everything is aligning really good, you don't have any leaks. And towards the very end you can do it by hand. Okay, you can see just like that. So 8mm socket, we are going to remove one bolt that holds the old dipstick towards the intake manifold. Okay, we get it loose and let's see if we can remove it by hand now. Okay. Almost out. Perfect. This is it. This is the bolt. We have one more 8mm that holds that uh, cable there. So that's what we'll be doing next. So we have a second one there now. Okay, second bolt. So we will remove uh, both of them and that way uh, that mount will come off. Okay. Uh, once it gets to so kind of like you get the socket only. Okay, this is one of the bolts. Now we have one more, the one on top. Okay, let me see if I can. Grab it here and just turn it with my fingers. This is the second bolt, okay, and that uh, bracket now, you can see it's loose on this side. So we'll proceed with the next step. Uh, we will remove a few bolts from the, uh, from the intake manifold with a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, you can see we have that bolt right there. It's a little bit of sunshine, so we're trying to keep it uh, in the shade so we can show you a little bit better. Those will be super, super tight. Okay, one here. One over there. Between these two, there is one more. Okay, it's down here under that relay, that valve. Okay, almost the block loose, but we cannot turn the ratchet. We need to use the extension for this one or a little bit shorter extension, maybe. We have one more hidden there. Okay, we got this one loose, this one there as well. Okay, let's see on this side to see if we have one more here or we don't. Okay, we have one more here hidden and this is behind the power steering pump. Now for the intake, for that last board, it's under the power steering pump. We will need to get the pump loose. You can do that without draining the oil out of the pump. You can just get the pump loose off the bracket here. I think it has three or four bolts and you can just slide it over a little bit. In our case, uh, we'll remove it because we'll take the engine apart, so uh, we'll show you how to do that. But the only difference is because we'll disconnect our power steering lines now. So once you remove this cover right here, you can see through the right wheel with a 14 millimeter wrench, we're going to get to the, to the tensioner pulley, right there. We're going to turn this thing clockwise, and when you, when you turn it clockwise, okay, the belt will get loose, and I'm going just to slide it off the water pump here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll get it off the 
little pulley okay right here perfect and it came off you can see it like that now we can go ahead and actually remove it from the power steering pump from the AC compressor down there okay now we need to go to the tensioner pulley remove it from the tensioner pulley and the crankshaft as well okay it's a very very limited room here So come underneath, pull it here through the pulley, get it out of the crankshaft. Now from the crankshaft, okay, right here, just like that. And then we can pull it up, and this is, guys, your belt. So with the belt out of the way, okay, we need to get a 17 millimeter socket, and we need to go ahead and remove that bolt here, okay, to get that uh, power steering line loose. Now this one will have two lock rings and two lock washers, kind of like flat washers. Do not lose them because if you do, you're going to leak oil out. It's recommended to replace those every time you remove it anyways. They're made out of copper. We'll disconnect our wire just by pushing up, okay, like that. So with 12 millimeter now here, Okay, we have two bolts on top that we need to get loose. And after that, I believe we have only one more on the bottom, maybe two. I don't remember exactly the design on this one. We've taken quite a few parts, but after a while you forget okay perfect we're going to put this bolt here so we don't lose it we we'll remove it so we can access the the bolts so next in order to drain the power steering fluid so we don't make a mess everywhere there is one Holes right there and our fender liner is messed up you can see so we're going to disconnect that hose now there is a clamp and that way our oil will come out it's very important to bleed your power steering later and we'll have a video how to do that because if you don't bleed it the correct way okay you're going to severely damage your power steering pump and you need a new pump Okay, what we can do, if we open it on top, probably it will come out a little bit faster. Okay, we'll just leave it open. So the third bolt is on the bottom. Okay, you can see right there. It's a chaos. That thing is so inconvenient. So we'll try to do it by hand. If we move the power steering a little bit, you can turn the ball by hand probably. Okay, and you can see this is the power steering pump with the reservoir now. Now you can see you didn't have to drain the uh, power steering pump and disconnect this line because you can just move it and get to the boat which is uh, located okay right here okay this is the bolt for the intake manifold but in our case we'll remove it so we can finish uh, finish with the power steering pump because we'll be removing timing cover later for timing timing chain replacement as well so in order to disconnect the power steering now we need to disconnect that hose the bottom hose so we need to move the clamp down okay you can see we slid the clamp down we use these pliers for that now the hose is a little bit attached to the plastic so we have to be careful okay not to break the power steering reservoir 
because you can replace those with power steering that don't come with the reservoir and the one that come with the reservoir so depending on whether you want to reuse your power steering or not Okay, it came out guys and this is your power steering pump with the reservoir right here. Okay, we're removing the last bolt now. Not the last one, we still have one more, I think, and two more hidden and we'll show in just a second. But the last one towards the top side. Perfect. Okay, so now with the 12 millimeter box offset box wrench we're going to remove that bolt on the side there it's next to the EGR pipe so we'll remove this one I think we have one more on the bottom and we should be close to removing that thing somehow unless something else is still holding somewhere After that we just have the one on the bottom. Once we remove the intake manifold, we're going to show you where exactly all the bolts are so you know what to expect, where to expect to see those bolts because even though it's a big space here, small four cylinder engine, the way it's designed it's a little bit hard to get to things. Mazda and Ford are known for that stuff. And uh, pretty much that that engine is developed with four together. So one more bolt. Okay, it's going sideways. This way. Okay, you can see the bolt spinning through here. Okay, this is the bolt. So we'll go ahead and remove this one now. It has a little bit of kind of like corrosion, you know, the aluminum, how it turns that whitish film. So it's a little bit hard to turn. Then I think you have two glides, okay, that go in the cylinder head. They will be probably about that, that long. We'll need to disconnect some wires, most likely as well. But let's see if that will be all the bolts holding the thing. I remember some of them used to have even a mount on some on Mazda's uh, metal plate that holds the intake towards the engine block. On this one, we didn't see it. I don't know if people removed it or not. Okay, it's almost almost out. Pretty long bolt. Okay, and you can see how the intake of it is moved towards the back. So now let's see. Okay, what else is holding it in place? Because like right here, it looks like some cables are holding it. This is the cable that we need to uh, disconnect now. We need to use the clip removal to okay let's see if we can pull that thing out okay perfect came out press down there those sometimes will break the clips okay so now in order to disconnect it okay press down and pull it apart now let's see if anything else is holding here now and if that intake will come out ok 
it looks like. Okay, we still have the EGR pipe here that we need to slide out. Okay, so this is the EGR pipe. So just pull it out. Okay, it's out all the way now. So let's see what else is holding here. And we need to disconnect, I believe this is the map sensor here. Okay, so, okay, what we need to do, press in here and pull it out. Okay, you press in here and then you disconnect it, pull it out. We have a hose here too, so careful now. Okay, we need to disconnect that hose. Okay, this is a soft hose. So we'll see if we can lift it up a little bit. Okay, like that and disconnect it from the clamp. Okay, right here. Okay, this one. Okay, this horse is disconnected now. Okay, let me just push it a little bit. A little bit more so to know that it's not holding for sure. This clamp, it's not super, super tight. Now, let's see if we can move the hose to pull it out. <coughs> so this uh, this hose is still pretty stuck. What we'll do, we'll remove the sensor with 8 mm socket quick. It's actually 7, my bad. So we'll remove it, that way we can get more access to the hose. Everything is so tight, be prepared to break your hands working on this car. Okay, perfect. Okay, we just pull it out like that. Now, this is the hose. You can see how much more room we have. So I think we just broke loose, it can loose. All we have to do is just pry it out. Now let's see if that thing will actually come out of the car. You have to be very careful, gentle. Okay guys, and the intake is out of here as you can see. That's one complicated thing to do. They're usually not so so complicated, but this one on this map is quite complicated. So with the intake manifold out of, out of the way guys, this is your crankcase breather right here. Okay, now we removed the uh, fuel rail so we can just show you where all the bolts are otherwise it's impossible to stick the camera. You don't have to remove the fuel rail. This is your crankcase breather right here. You have four bolts that we need to remove. Okay, those are with 8mm socket guys. One is out. Okay, we have, you can see, some on top, four on top, and some on the bottom. Okay, this one we have to remove by hand because the impact got stuck. It's a little bit of limited room there. Uh, the one on the very left side, we'll use the ratchet now because we'll not be able to get our little impact. All the tools, guys, and parts that we use, okay, will be listed in the description of the video below for your convenience.
Okay, this one is getting loose, so we'll see on the bottom how many we have. Okay, looks like we have two more on the bottom actually. There, so we'll go ahead, okay. Remove those. This one is still stuck, so we won't be able to remove it by hand. Okay, you can see that water pipe is actually in the way a little bit, but eventually you can remove the bolt. That's your fuel injectors guys, this is your fuel rail, that's what we removed, but again you don't have to remove it. All those videos will be on the channel if you need to check it out guys. We have two more bolts on the bottom, from what I can feel with my fingers, it might be more. Okay, there is one here and one over there and one on the side. So one on the side, that's a little bit hidden, most people will not think about this one. Okay, perfect. Now guys, two more on the bottom that we need to remove. Okay, getting one of them loose now. Okay, one is out. Just one more, I believe, on the bottom. So let's see. If this one will be the last one now. Okay, perfect guys. Let's see if we have anything else holding there or that will be all. Uh, because it's a little bit hard to see there is a gasket here, so it will be a little bit stuck now Okay, you can see you just need to pull on it a little bit Okay guys and this is your crankcase breather you can see how terribly bad that thing is okay looks terrible so that's how you guys remove it, you can check out in the description of the video below where we get our replacement parts from guys, check it out below, so that's how we do it, thank you for watching guys, please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time.